St. Catherine Academy's Science Fair is sponsored by Belize Water Services, BWS, Atlantic Bank, Digi, or National Telecom, Blue by Einer Marin, The Angeles Press Limited, Quality for Less, The Ice Cream Shop, Yogo Bean, Frozen Yogurt and Coffee Bar, My Tiny Plant Shop, Jana's Fashion in Corozal Town, Mappy's Beauty World, when you look good, we look good. Oceana, protecting the world's oceans. I Candy Boutique. Milky Way Cafe. And the Honorable Tracy Tager Panton. A pleasant good evening to one and all. I am Tyrone Laureano, your Master of Ceremony for tonight's show. To you, the viewers, I say welcome to the first ever one of a kind showcase of women in science. Here you will witness a collective demonstration of young, curious, and budding scientists as they display the application of the scientific method to come to a conclusion about a question they derived about three months ago. This evening, St. Catherine's Academy brings to your living room our virtual science fair. So grab a snack, gather up the family, and stay tuned in. We will now be led in prayer by our Student Council President, Sana Roland. Good day, everyone. Please get reverent for prayers. Sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless, O Lord, this school. Let there be here health and holiness, strength and glory, humility and goodness, meekness and gentleness, docility and fidelity, obedience and thanksgiving to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May this blessing come upon this school. May the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit come to the teachers, students, staff, and parents of this school. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing each and every one of us to be here today. Thank you for granting us this opportunity to showcase and present our projects in this year's science fair. Thank you for continuously blessing us with life, family, good health, protection, guidance, and forgiveness for our sins. Father, I ask that you continue to do all these things and more. May you remind us that we are called to do our best in all that we do and that we are all winners in your eyes. In your precious name, Jesus Christ, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We now go over to Mrs. Salome Tilly and Mrs. Ingrid Acosta to announce our winners. Hello all, my name is Ayana Wattler and the members of my team who are presenting this very informative presentation are Amber Flowers, Carly Huesner and Michaela Richards. Because women make up the majority of the workforce and most women have experienced menstrual periods, they are able to acknowledge the pains which are tied in with menstruation. At times, the symptoms of menstruation may be so severe that this may prevent them from working. Hence, we strongly believe that by utilizing our home remedies, 
This absence from work will be a thing of the past. Remember, don't be ludicrous. Save your uterus. So what was the underlying question of our science fair project? It was, which pain relief method works better to relieve menstrual cramps? Will it be the turmeric tea or will it be the heat pads? Well, our hypothesis was that if heating pads are used during menstruation, then it can help to decrease the intensity of menstrual cramps. Throughout this experiment, my group and I had many different variables. Firstly, was our independent variable, which is the heating pad, because that is what we will be manipulating. And our dependent variable is the intensity of the menstrual cramps, which the person is experiencing during menstruation. Our control variables, or the variables which will remain the same throughout the experiment, are the two female specimens who are experiencing their menstruation around the same time because this will help and be advantageous throughout the experiment. Next is the temperature of the heating pads. These must remain at a constant level because if it is changed, this may have an effect on the results of our experiment. Lastly, the environment must also remain stable because if that specimen relocates to a different area and the temperature within that area is different, then this may also affect the results. The materials needed for this experiment are two female specimens, a heating pad, menstrual pads, a pot of turmeric or turmeric tea, fresh ginger, and cinnamon. Discussion. Menstruation is the shedding of the blood from the uterine lining when fertilization of the female egg does not occur. Associated with the menstrual cycle is usually intense cramps and unbearable pain. In this experiment, the two pain relief methods were studied in order to see which method is more effective in regards of pain relief. During this experiment, there were three trials to test the effectiveness of heating pads and turmeric tea. One trial was executed in the ending of October, another in the ending of November, and the other in the ending of December. How long the pain lasted while using these methods were analyzed and heating pads evidently proved to be more effective when it comes to pain relief. After conducting our experiment between the heating pad and the turmeric tea to see which one would reduce the crop pain levels more, we came to a conclusion that using a heating pad does work better to reduce the crop pain levels. Are you excited as yet? Well, this show is full of winners. Our very own St. Catherine's Academy student viewers can also be winners. By the end of this show, we would like to give our winner a tablet, an Alcatel 1T7. All you have to do is to complete the form shared in the SCA, a Mercy Center for Excellence and Innovation for School Team. Go on, students, find the link and share it with your family to win this fabulous prize. Let's keep the momentum force moving as we listen to the presentation from tonight's guest speaker. I am proud to present tonight's guest speaker, Ms. Juhi Nandwani. I can fondly remember Juhi trotting down the breezeway, making her way over to the chemistry lab. She would always be jovial and ensure to check in with her fellow Mauritians as she passed. Juhi was a student council president during her time at SDA. During her council's term, they were responsible for installing the picnic benches that we currently use today on the said pathway. Juhi was also the founding member of the technology club at SDA, a prefect and a payer helper. It was very easy to, to spot the budding scientists within her. She's a true essence of a servant leader. Juhi pursued her Bachelor of Science in Radiation Therapy on the pre-medicine track at St. Louis University. Later, she attended University of California, Berkeley, where she completed a Master's of Engineering Leadership 
in nuclear engineering for medical applications. Recently, she started her professional career working as the Executive Administrator and Business Operations Coordinator at a fast-growing education technology company, Monty Kids. She then transitioned her role into Data Analyst and Operations Associate. Her day-to-day -day tasks include collaborating with different teams to build data visualizations and track customer behavior synchronizing data across multiple platforms, and also optimizing different processes related to product development. She hopes to soon transition this skill and knowledge to a health technology company. Her speeches at SCA were always energizing, and that is just what we need to rid ourselves of this COVID fatigue. She is here to motivate you, our young girls in science, Listen keenly to her valuable advice. Hello, SCA. Welcome to this year's Science Fair. I'm so excited to be your guest speaker this year. Thank you for having me. My name is Juhi Nandwani, and I graduated from SCA in 2013. Some of my best memories were made on our very campus. I remember running to the cafeteria to get cheese bun during break, walking across the breezeway to the science lab, and of course, science fair. For one of the science fairs I participated in, my team and I created a low-cost homemade incubator to hatch chicks. It was an amazing project that allowed us to combine our technical skills along with our leadership and collaborative skills to see our project from start to finish. Being a woman in STEM has never been easy. Women only make up 28% of the STEM workforce, and women continue to earn less than male counterparts for the same jobs. For a long time coming, equal access to STEM education was difficult for women to obtain. And in some situations, it still is difficult for women to obtain this education today. I've personally experienced sexism and stereotyping while working to obtain my license to practice radiation therapy. Many of my superiors disregarded my statements and doubted my potential. Additionally, Many times throughout my graduate coursework, my thoughts and opinions were dismissed almost instantaneously, and more attention was given to male counterparts when working on projects. This type of behavior from collaborators initially made me feel sad and even angry at times. And I know many of you are able to relate and have similar experiences. Denying women chances to recognize their potential in STEM is something that is seen across the globe. But let's turn this around. The next time someone does not recognize your potential, make sure you recognize it. Be your own cheerleader. Be a cheerleader for other women. If we don't lift each other up, we are only fueling all the barriers that already exist against us. So raise your hand in class the next time you think you know the answer. Be confident. Explore different realms of science. Appreciate fairs like this one and take advantage of learning these new concepts. STEM is not against you. You are STEM. And remember, if you haven't failed at anything as yet, it means you haven't tried anything as yet. Still yet, don't minimize the problem. Let's not continue this discrimination. Diverse teams are more efficient, productive, and creative. Hopefully soon, there won't be a question about why there are so few women in STEM. Instead, women will be searching for jobs, doing research, making discoveries, and feeling excited about their career and the future. And you, my SEA girls, make up the future of STEM in Belize and in the world. I believe in you, and I know SEA believes in you. You are attending one of the finest institutions in the world. Thank you so much for having me here as your guest speaker. I want to congratulate all of you for all the hard work you've put into your projects, and congratulations to the winners. The single group categories. In these categories, there was only one winner. Even though the static attraction to each group was very close, in the end, there was only one group of covalently bonded minds that was able to pull together the victory in these two categories. In this category, we are looking for the project that was most applicable to the league. The nominees are Hereditary fingerprints, mangrove and coastal protection, acid rain and seedlings. And the winners. Most applicable project to believe.
mangrove and coastal protection from 1CL. Congratulations. Congratulations. How do mangroves prevent erosion? By Justin Moran, Angeline Hedegaard, Roxelle Encolada, Chloe Sanchez, and Isabel Terry. Abstract. Mangroves play a major part in our aquatic ecosystem. We wanted to base our experiment on how cutting down those mangroves can cause coastal erosion. So many beaches and villages on the coast are affected by erosion every year. Not only does it ruin beautiful destinations, but it also ruins numerous ecosystems. We researched, if mangroves are left to grow, there is a small possibility of erosion happening. For us to test if our hypothesis is accurate, we had to first make sure our procedures aligned with one another. We got a machine that makes waves and we added it to water and tested one side with mangroves and one without mangroves. In the end, we concluded that our hypothesis was indeed accurate. The side that had mangroves, the sand stayed in place, while the side without mangroves had scattered sand over the bottom of the container. We would say our experiment was a hundred percent success. Our experiment brings awareness to erosion and why we should keep our mangroves safe. Our question is variables and hypotheses. The question, what is erosion? What are mangroves? And how do mangroves prevent erosion? Our hypotheses. If mangroves are left to grow, then there is a small possibility of erosion in the sand. The variables are the independence, which is mangroves. The dependent variable is the shoreline, and the control variable is the shoreline protected with mangroves. Background research. How do mangroves prevent erosion? Mangroves are a major part of Belize. They protect our shorelines, prevent erosion, and help our aquatic ecosystem. Most people don't know why these life-saving mangroves are so important, so we are here to tell you why. First off, we need to know what are mangroves. Mangroves are tropical trees that grow in or near water, and they grow near roots from branches. Second, we need to know what is erosion and how do mangroves prevent it. Erosion is when natural resources are destroyed by wind, rain, or the sea. Mangroves prevent erosion by their above ground roots that slow down water flows. Mangroves stabilize sediments such as clay and fine silt with their tangled root system. We also must know how we can prevent erosion because there is a way. We can prevent erosion by keeping seven main threats to mangrove forests, so we need to control and keep our ecosystem safe. There are lots of experiments that have been made with mangroves and their purpose is the same as ours. They are trying to prove a point and teach others the importance of these amazing mangroves. And just the same as us, we are here to teach everyone and educate them on why we need to keep mangroves safe. what is erosion. So what are mangroves? Well, they are trees or bushes that grow together along the seashores or riversides. What is erosion? Erosion is the action that removes a material substance by wind, water, rain, or ice. Our group decided to find out the population of mangroves in Belize and their species. Belize has a variety of four different mangroves. The red mangrove, the black mangrove, the white mangrove, and the buttonwood. 4% of the living plant is covered by mangroves and bordered much of 38 kilometers coastline and coast of this country. Materials Large rectangular clear plastic containers, sand, water, fig trees, foam block, and machine. Experimental procedures Get a clear rectangular plastic container, place it on a flat surface. Add sand and
found that there was a much less chance of shores being destroyed if we let the mangroves grow and protect us from erosion. In conclusion, our theory was tested and we were right. Mangroves reduce damage caused by erosion. Each member of the winning group for the most environmentally friendly all win a package from Oceana and a potted plant from My Tiny Plant Shop. The most environmentally friendly category. The nominees for this category are mangrove and coastal protection, acid rain and seedling, biodegradable materials. And the winners from first form 1CL with group member Jesslyn Moran, Chloe Santos, Anthony Hedges, Roxelle in Kalala, and Isabel Terry. The winners, Mango and Coastal Protection. Congratulations. We pause our presentations at this time to introduce to you the judges. They had by far the hardest job of them all. They had to decide the winners in these categories. And I can say that the race was so close that the friction between the scores gave off such kinetic energy that it was boiling hot. But they delivered, and here are our judges. Mr. Jude Lizama is the face behind the SCH Jude Lizama Environmental Award. He is a retired teacher from St. Patrick Academy with 41 years teaching experience. He is also the leading country biology CXC moderator and team leader of the Chief Science Moderators in Belize. Mr. Reginald Rodriguez. He is the face behind SCA's Reginald Rodriguez Science Award. He is a retired teacher with 38 years teaching experience. He served at CXC in various capacities as examiner, marker, and assistant examiner for chemistry CXC. Ms. Giuliani Passas is a UB lecturer with 20 years teaching experience. She holds a Master in Chemistry and was the former Dean of Science and Technology at the University of Belize. Ms. Kimiko Ferguson is a Forensic Chemistry Doctoral Candidate and has a Master's in Chemistry from Florida International University. She has five years teaching experience at various levels of education and was the former assistant director of the Belize National Forensic Science Service Laboratory for four years. Mr. Jamal Galvez, he's the program coordinator and research biologist for Clearwater Marine Aquarium Research Institute and also recipient of the 2018 National Geographic Photo Archive Fellowship, Oceana Ocean Hero Award, Belize National Hero Award, World Wildlife Fund Planet Hero Award, among others. Ms. Shade Lewis. She is an SC alumna. She has a summa cum laude in her undergraduate studies from Lone Star College. She is currently pursuing her bachelor's in mathematics with a minor in data science at the University of Houston and is a member of the Distinguished Deans list. Ms. Naomi Sanchez is an entrepreneur, co-founder of Zero Belize and recipient of Dare to Dream Big program from Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust. She was a finalist for the Belize Investment Summit. Ms. Joey Nandwani is a graduate student in Master of Science in Engineering Leadership from the University of California, Berkeley. She is a passionate advocate for digital health and health technology. Mr. Kevin Forrester. He holds a bachelor's in biological science from Fordham University, New York, and is currently a teacher at Nazarene High School. He's also a science teacher and has 16 years teaching experience. Mrs. Charlotte Noble is a biology and integrated science teacher for 25 years. She's the assistant chief examiner for CSEC and also was a marker for CSEC for 15 years. Her panel, she was a member of the um, panel for revamping of the HSS, HSB syllabus. Mrs. Reina Gonzalez-Riverall. 
is the project manager for the building and civil section of Belize Water Services and is responsible for the design and execution of projects with a team of three engineers. Ms. Keisha Williams is an adjunct lecturer at the University of Belize. She's a science teacher for 19 years and she's an internship supervisor for the University of Belize. She served in unionism in several capacities and is, was the former head of science and math department at Gwen Lizarraga High School. Thank you to our invited judges. Our junior and senior categories. In each of these categories, there were two winners, one from amongst our seniors and the other from amongst our juniors. Junior and senior categories. The nominees for the best visual display in the junior category are the following groups. Energy food, solar power and desalination. Behind the music, air curls and The winners for best visual display in the junior category all win gift items from Mappis Beauty World and a gift certificate from Milky Way. Good day everyone, we hope you're all doing well. I'm sure you guys know we love to see our curly headed queens and kings, but we hate to see undefined curls with so much excess product, which is exactly why we based our science experiment on the beauty behind commonly used products. Curl -a -la Defining Curl Custard At the very beginning, we expected the Curl -a -la Defining Curl Custard to define the participant's hair the best, but we were terribly wrong. The product had a somewhat liquidy consistency. To begin, we split the freshly washed hair into two sections. Then, we applied the product. As we were working in the custard, we immediately noticed that there was residue. It would not completely soak in the hair which caused the curls to become dry. The residue also made the hair heavier, so all the curls were held down and unable to show the voluminous potential we had hoped for. We expected the cream of nature curl of hair leave-in to define the participant's hair to a certain extent, but not as much as the other product. The cream of nature curl of hair leave-in had a thick consistency. We placed the product in the second section of the hair and it mixed perfectly. The participant's hair was not only moisturized, but it was soft and very curly. There was no residue to be found which indicated there was no problem with the moisturizer emulsifying with the hair. The specific ingredient that played a major role in this was glycol steroid. Another good thing about glycol is that it is very healthy for your hair. It helps improve the texture and consistency and does not leave a greasy feeling after use. We conducted the experiment over a four-day period, each time taking a before and after picture of the hair. We recorded the first experiment as it was proven to be more reliable and had more information. Chanel is now a user of the Cream of Nature product and claims that his curls has never flourished nor looked any better. I hope this experiment helped you to understand the process of Trinelle's now defined curls. We would like to thank everyone who participated, voted, and gave us great feedback. Remember, defined curls is an important policy. Stay safe and continue elevating. Thank you. Winners for best display, senior categories, all win. Gift items from Jana's online store and a gift certificate from the ice cream shop. The Hereditary fingerprints from 3S1. Congratulations!
What was this experiment about? Well, proof is in the prints. In this lab report, researchers will be investigating whether people who are related will inherit the same type of fingerprint and whether unrelated people will be different. The question that was being tested was, are fingerprints patterns inherited through genes? Our hypothesis stated that if people are related then fingerprint patterns will be inherited because they have the same genes. Background research. Every person is born with fingerprint patterns. According to the Cambridge English Dictionary, fingerprint patterns are curved lines on the end of a finger or thumb that is different in every person. As people grow older, their fingerprint pattern does not change but the outline and size does. There are three main categories of fingerprints, namely arches, loops, and whorls, with numerous patterns in between. Even though those patterns are similar, the details of each pattern are different for everyone. The data was organized into two separate tables. The first table was showcasing fingerprint patterns of related persons, and the second table was showcasing fingerprint patterns of unrelated persons. The type of pattern was stated in the fingerprint category column, and in the last column, a yes was stated if the pairs have matching patterns, and a no was stated if the patterns did not match. The same step was completed for the unrelated peers. Using this information, the percentage of similarity and difference between pattern match was found for both related and unrelated peers. As we can see here, there was an 80% similarity of related peers and a 10% similarity between pattern match for unrelated peers. There was a 20% difference between pattern match for related peers and a 90% difference for unrelated peers. Finally, using the application Microsoft Excel, a graph was created to compare the results of similarity and difference. This made it easier for trends to be identified and it would be easier to analyze the data compared to looking at it in the results table. Our data that was collected from our experiment. Here are two of the fingerprints with their matching pairs. Throughout this experiment, different fingerprints were collected from 10 related pairs and 10 unrelated pairs using an impact variation. The hypothesis stated that if people are related, then fingerprint patterns will be inherited because they have the same genes. The result of this experiment shows that 80% of related pairs have similar fingerprint patterns while 20% showed a difference in the patterns. With reference to our hypothesis, it proves that majority of related persons have similar fingerprint patterns. Acknowledgement. Gratitude is shared to group members Daniele Garbot, Jazelle Williams, Kioja Felix, Rima Landa Verde, and myself, Nayari Obando, for the endless participation. Appreciation is shared to all parents and teachers who assisted and provided feedback through the science fair journey, and most importantly, to God for providing wisdom and knowledge. Thank you. Most innovative, both junior and senior categories will be receiving $50 gift card from Digi. The most innovative and junior division. The nominees are mangrove and coastal protection, solar power desalination, and behind the beauty. Whoa, I wonder which group won't care. The winner from 1LF
Leah Khan, Isabel Mungal, and Isha Pitt. Congratulations. Congratulations. The nominees for the most innovative senior category are Hereditary Fingerprints, Non-Lethal Dog Repellent, and Biodegradable Materials. Right. I love the title of these um, projects. The winner for the most innovative senior category is non lethal dog repellent. And the winners, Alyssa Garcia, Kia Edmonton, Ariane Tillich, and Amo Thompson. Congratulations. We noticed that stray dogs sometimes dig through the garbage and leave a big mess on the street, so we set out to solve that problem. To solve our problem, we asked ourselves, what is a safe, effective way to deter stray dogs from digging the track? We hypothesized that if a mixture of two cloves of garlic, a half a cup of vinegar, and two cups of water is sprayed around the trash can, then stray dogs will not dig in the garbage because of the pungent odor from the acetic acid in the vinegar and the odor of the allyl methyl sulfide compound in the garlic. The materials for this experiment are 6 cloves of garlic, 3 pots, 6 cups of water, 1.5 cups of vinegar, 3 containers, a spatula or spoon, 3 spray bottles, a measuring cup, a stove, a timer, and a funnel. The independent variable is the proportion of vinegar to water, the dependent variable is the dog's response to the odor of the repellent, and the control variable is the amount of water used to create the repellent, the amount of garlic used, the period of time the garlic was left to sit in the boiled water, the brand of vinegar used, and the type of garbage used. Procedures In pot 1, heat up 2 cups of water until it starts to boil. Soak 2 cloves of garlic in the boiled water for 15 minutes. Pour a fourth cup of vinegar into the mixture and stir it. Strain the mixture into a container and pour it into a spray bottle using a funnel. On garbage day, spray the mixture around the garbage can and observe how the dogs respond to the odor. Record the reaction of the dogs. In pot two, heat up two cups of water until it starts to boil. Soak two cloves of garlic in the boiled water for 15 minutes. Pour a third cup of vinegar into the mixture and stir it. Strain the mixture into a container and pour it into a spray bottle using a funnel. On garbage day, spray the mixture around the garbage can and observe how the dogs respond. Record the reaction of the dogs. In pot 3, heat up 2 cups of water until it starts to boil. Soak 2 cloves of garlic in the boiled water for 15 minutes. Pour a half cup of vinegar into the mixture and stir it. Strain the mixture into a container and pour it into a spray bottle using a funnel. On garbage day, spray the mixture around the garbage can and observe how the dogs respond. Record the reaction of the dogs.
We conducted four trials for this experiment. Trial 1 had a control of three dogs. Both arches 1 and 2 were not effective because all three dogs still showed interest in the garbage. However, batch 3 was successful because it was able to prevent two of the dogs from trying to get into the garbage. Trial 2 had a control of one dog. Unfortunately, none of the batches tested during this trial were effective. The dog still showed interest in the garbage after it was sprayed with all three batches. Trial 3 had a control of three dogs. Both batches 1 and 2 were very effective because they prevented two of the dogs from digging through the garbage. While batch 3 was successful in preventing one dog from going through the garbage, the two other dogs still seemed to show interest in it. Trial 4 had a control of 4 dogs. Both batches 1 and 2 were not effective in preventing any of the dogs from digging through the garbage. Even though batch 3 was successful in preventing one dog from digging through the garbage, it still wasn't very effective seeing that majority of the dogs were still interested in the garbage. Our findings support our hypothesis as the most effective batch was batch 3 which had the highest concentration of garlic and vinegar in proportion to water. This experiment was slightly limited by the varying number of dogs in the areas that were being tested, as well as an error in the measuring of the solution's ingredients in trial 4. This experiment can be improved upon by increasing the amount of garlic and vinegar in the solution, checking the measurements multiple times, and utilizing test areas with roughly the same number of dogs. Winners for the best in division in the junior category collectively received a tuition grant of $500, courtesy of Belize Water Services. The nominees for the best project in the junior division are the following projects. Behind the Beauty, Energy Foods, Solar Power Desalination. And the winners are Gianna Donis, Karen Simon, Lina Zabane, What is solar powered water desalination? Solar desalination is a desalination technique powered by solar energy. The two common methods are direct or thermal and indirect or photovoltaic. Why is solar powered water desalination important? It's important because it is very energy intensive and using solar power helps combat greenhouse gas emissions. It reduces our dependence on fossil fuels and also significantly reduces operating costs. While our desalination is, a ver is very important, especially for Belize, because we have many keys and islands with limited freshwater resources, and with the abundance of seawater and sunlight we have, solar power desalination would be able to solve this problem. Our hypothesis while conducting this experiment was, if the desalination device uses a black colored bottom instead of a white colored bottom, the evaporation will occur faster and be more efficient. What we found in our research results. We found out that the black colored bottom yielded more fresh water than the white colored bottom. This is because the black color from the device absorbs more heat from the sun, which causes the rate of evaporation to increase. While on the other hand, the white color from the device reflects the sunlight which slows down the rate of evaporation. On the solar power desalination data graph, you see that on trial number one, the white bottom yielded 6 milliliters of water and the black bottom yielded 15.5 milliliters of water. On trial number two, the white bottom yielded 2 milliliters of water and the black bottom yielded 12.5 milliliters. On trial number 3, the white bottom yielded 0.5 milliliters and the black bottom yielded 19 milliliters of water. What can we do with the remaining salt after the experiment? The remaining salt can be used to keep ice and ice cream from melting. Salt alters freezing melting point of water by altering the way it freezes. The ice can now be used to keep the ice cream from melting.
keep in mind the ice cream should be in a cup with a cover on. The ice cream itself should not make contact with the ice. Winners for best division in the senior categories collectively receive a gift certificate for $500 savings account courtesy Atlantic Bank Limited. The nominees for the best project in senior division are video gaming and hard grade, biodegradable material, and the shrimp effect. The winner in this category, biodegradable materials by four science one students, Avira Gomez, Shadir Brannan, Deandi Lamberson, Mia Rukenia, and Kelly Steven. Congratulations! problem statement was how fast different biodegradable or compostable materials decompose. Reason for our project. We wanted to explore and experiment on this topic as it will provide us with the information about the pressing issue of pollution in the aquatic scene of Belize. Also, we were curious to know roughly how long most of these materials would be present before they decompose. Our hypothesis. If biodegradable and compostable materials are placed in salt water, then the rate of decomposition would increase faster than in fresh water. Variables. Our independent variables is the type of water we use, whether it's salt water or fresh water. The dependent variable is the rate of decomposition. Our control variable is the temperature and volume. So the materials we used for our experiment were biodegradable cups and plates, banana and citrus peels, sea and fresh water, extreme sunlight, clear containers, a ruler, a measuring cup, and a scissors. Following our procedures, we first placed two to 10 cups of fresh water into two clear containers. We then cut the four samples into four by two inches or eight inches squared and labeled the banana peel one, citrus peel two, biodegradable cup three, and biodegradable plate four. After this, we placed the label samples in the two separate containers filled with fresh water, one for biodegradable cups and plates and the other for the citrus and banana peel. We placed the setup under the sun in an area with extreme sunlight and covered the container with a piece of cloth. We repeated the steps 1 to 6 for salt sea water and repeated these steps again but placed the samples in an empty container and used it as our control group. We measured the length of the samples every week for five weeks and tabulated the results for salt, fresh, and no water. Lastly, we repeated the entire experiment four more times for accuracy, where each group member did one try. For our observations, the results for the first week for the different observations has been the same since the experiment started for each material having a length of four and a width of two. In week two, we observed that the banana and citrus peels decreased in size, meaning they started to decompose and shrink. The biodegradable cups and plates weren't affected, therefore they remained the same size. The results for week 3 were different because the banana peel and citrus peel continues to shrink but not majorly, whereas the size for the biodegradable cup and biodegradable plate stayed the same. In the fourth week, our results showed that the citrus and banana peel continued to decompose at a slow rate. As for the biodegradable cups and plates, we only had saw a change in the fifth trial. That shows that the salt and fresh water are starting to deteriorate or shrink the biodegradable materials. In the fifth week, you can see that the compost materials continue to deteriorate. The biodegradable materials haven't changed yet for the first four trials. A reason behind this being that trial 5 had more sunlight than trial 1 to 4. Now for the data analysis. The results were placed in a line graph that easily represent the average of the four different materials in the air. Same goes for the average in fresh water to easily portray how the materials decrease in size. The 
Tom Ridge for the salt water in the line graph shows how the citrus decreased in size more than any other material. Now for the comparing of salt water and fresh water. Because we were mainly comparing how the materials would have degraded in salt water and fresh water conditions, we constructed a bar graph representing the overall average for each material. We concluded that because of the preservatives in salt water, the sample sizes decreased less in fresh water where they decreased more. Now for our pictures of our setups. We have trial 1, trial 2, trial 3, trial 4, and trial 5. For our discussion, after the experiment was conducted, the results obtained fell in line with our research. Fresh water can cause the biodegradable materials to decompose faster than salt water. However, our experiment took longer than expected because the time span to gather the results was short. So we decided to alter the conditions to allow results to be collected quickly. As a result of this, our hypothesis wasn't supported. In the end, we calculated the percentages of the difference between the rates of decomposition. They are as follows. For the salt water, banana peel was 76.7%, citrus peel 76.32%, Biodegradable cup 96.82% and biodegradable plate 97.2%. For the fresh water, banana peel 67.47%, citrus peel 75.57%, biodegradable cup 96.05% and biodegradable plate 95.02%. Our limitations and sources of errors. There are a few limitations and errors in this experiment that might have affected the results. One error would be the weather, which isn't always constant. For example, rain, especially since there was a constant volume of water to be kept. Another example is wind. One of the set cups could be blown away and therefore won't be measured. A second error would be insects or creatures that either eat the samples or contaminate the water. One important limitation to note is that when extracting salt water from the sea, since it is being tampered with, it can affect our results. Conclusion It was found that the rate of decomposition for biodegradable and composable materials is faster in fresh water than in salt water. Ideas for future research An idea for future reference can be to have everyone in the group start the experiment at the same time and use the same containers for the setup. This is to see if everyone would have the same results by the end of the experiment. Another idea for a future reference could be that when the weather changes and it rains or it is windy, we protect them so that our experiment can have less to no sources of errors as possible. How will our research be helpful to Belize? From our research, we found that biodegradable materials took longer to decompose in salt water than in fresh water. We can deduct from this observation that areas with salt water would be more likely to have pollution. This means that ideal we should focus on cleanups near water bodies, specifically the sea, since salt water decomposes materials at a slower rate. And then, the highly anticipated moment. Girls, first of all, we want you to know, we all think the world of you, we know that you put in a lot of work. We know that the viewers assisted by nominating the viewer's choice, but we also know that the judges is very rigorous standard to decide who would be the overall winner. And they had a hard job because all the projects were really good. So after much deliberation, consideration, turns and twisting, they got the final overall winner. Is the team. This team is the team <laughs> that showcased the best application of the scientific method in their research. They analyzed and displayed data and confidently communicated their findings to the panel of judges. And the winner for best overall project is Biodegradable Materials from 4S1. Congratulations. Congratulations! Now, Mr. Loriano, you get to tell them what they have won. We're here already. The winner for the best overall project. The winners 
all receive a gift certificate from Blue by Einar Marin. And the best is yet to come. So each winning member will receive an all expense paid scholarship for a sea turtle research course by Kevin Andrew. Sponsored by Belize Water Services. While we try our best to reduce the level of adrenaline running through our circulatory system at this time, and as we try to adhere to the laws of gravity and stay in our seats, we must make honorable mention of some of our other projects. Thank you all for observing us with microscopic eyes and for celebrating our success of these young women in science. Now I say, go, go spread the word. Talk about what we witnessed today, for this is one that is now etched in the history of innovation and excellence in education. And remember, you saw it first here at St. Catherine's Academy Science Fair. Thank you. And God's richest blessing be with you all. I'd like to take this moment to thank our students who were very patient during this process and who definitely grew as scientists. They've learned the scientific method. Our parents who were there to assist all the way, teachers and staff, English department who were there to assist with research and citation methods, Mr. Richard Valle for technical assistance, the science department for their innovative vision, formulation, and execution of this grand project. Our administrative team for entrusting us with the necessary resources for the successful completion. And lastly, our sponsors. St. Catherine Academy's Science Fair is sponsored by Belize Water Services, BWS. Atlantic Bank, Digi, or National Telecom, Blue by Einer Marin, The Angeles Press Limited, Quality for Less, The Ice Cream Shop, Yogo Bean, Frozen Yogurt and Coffee Bar. My Tiny Plant Shop Jana's Fashion in Corozal Town Mappy's Beauty World When you look good, we look good Oceana, protecting the world's oceans Eye Candy Boutique Milky Way Cafe and the Honorable Tracy Tager Panton.